So seasons, if we want to look at seasons, the best place is Ecclesiastes 3. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Now, this thing, this purpose is what God determines. And no man's doctrine can change that. But he says to every purpose, to everything, there's a time and there's a season. Then he goes on and he hits the all natural cycle. And we all go through this. Now, there is a time in my life I looked at this and I'm like, oh, no, I don't want this breaking down and uh, destroying and separating. And I, I can't think I, this man must have been in a fallen creation, I say to myself, because that's what they taught us in Bible school. But if you listen to it, this is really the cycle. And the only way you can break a cycle is when you plant a seed. <laughs> This is how you were born. So how are you going to break this natural cycle of just going on and up and down and up and down? You plant a seed and you step into another time. He says, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break and a time to build up. I don't want to even read it further because... You recognize it. It's you. Then he goes on and he says in verse 9, What does this all profit? Why do we labor? Why do we work? He says, I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of man to be exercised in it. Where did work start? When they left the garden, he says, Go toil the ground. Listen, guys, I just want to say to you, the first command God commissioned, I would say, God gave man was to work. And only then came the woman because Adam had to tend the garden and only then came the woman to help him. So if you don't work, why would you want help? That's where all the trouble comes in. Get a job and then get help. And if you have a job, you'll have the respect and she will know what to help. Most of the times we mess up this God-given commission of God. Now work has turned into labor. Go till the ground and you will eat from the sweat of your brow. This is horrible. Now, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. How can a time to die, a time to live, a time to break down, a time to root up, how can that be beautiful? Now, if you do not understand that the purpose of God, he has made everything beautiful in his purpose, then you don't understand the beauty of it. So <laughs> we read in Hebrews that these people ran their race, but they never got the promises. But in running their race and keeping their faith, they are part of the eternal purposes of God. So even the breaking down, it's okay, as only you understand the purposes of God. But he says, he made everything beautiful in his time. So he hath also set eternity in their hearts. He actually means here, eternity is in your heart because you are made in the image and the likeness of God. And you can run where you want to. You'll never get away from it. <laughs> you know, it's like, he says, how can the potter say to the maker, why did you make me that way? Why don't you just... Um, Get the beauty of your time and of your season and step into what God has for you. Oh, this is a good sermon. So that no man can find out the work of God that he makes from beginning to end. What is he saying here? He's saying that we are stuck in time, but God is in eternity. And we cannot know what God does from beginning to ending unless we step into that purpose. I know whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever and nothing can put it out and nor anything can be taken away from it. And God doeth it and men should fear before God. But now he comes back to the natural in verse 15 and he says, That which has been is now and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth 
that which is past. <laughs> so there, there is a place where nothing you experience is new. Hey, if you think, oh, sin is all in the street, it has been from the beginning. Why do you think God sent the flood? The worst sin was there. <laughs> I mean, the world now is in, in a different realm. Christ came to this earth. Imagine what it was like. It was so bad. God destroyed the world. Don't come with this thing that, oh, the youth and the sin and that. No, we must get into the purposes and the progressions of God. When it comes to time, in, in the word, it is like it's time periods. It is not, um, it's not the 24 hours. When we read time in the natural, it's seconds, minutes, oh, I think there's milliseconds, seconds, minutes. Then there's um, hours, days, and years. But there are certain of these terms that <laughs> these terms have a total different meaning in the spirit. Because Jesus came and he said, my hour has come. My hour has come. He says, my heart's troubled for my hour is come. He said to the woman, no woman, my hour has not yet come. What is his hour? An hour is the, it's the time that he stepped in and was baptized with fire and took all the judgment on him to a point where he cried and he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? So an hour is that time that Jesus paid the price and he knew it was coming because it was revealed to him on the mountain of transfiguration. But now he comes in Luke 4, he says, he took the scroll of Isaiah and he says, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. But Isaiah speaks about a day of vengeance. So let's look at these terms. There's an hour, there's a day, and there's a year. It's comparisons. So he says, this short time of trial that I'm going to go through will bring an everlasting, a year of favor. <laughs> so a day of vengeance was the day of wrath. The day of the Lord was the day of wrath, a day of vengeance. But it was a certain period. It was 40 years. Now, it's not just, you can't just take these things. These things are set in the Bible over and over and over. In 2 Peter 3, he actually describes a world that was before the flood and he describes a world that is now. And then he goes on to this scripture in verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Now, he says here, we must not be ignorant. And then he says, there are these people, they are willingly ignorant in understanding the worlds. In other words, what we do is we take the Bible and inspired by the Spirit, he lifts things up to us. But we never step into the purposes of God because we are willingly ignorant of times and worlds and realms and seasons. And you can't just take these things out. So a day is with God as a thousand years. Uh oh, you can't say that's all. It's spirit. It goes like that. In Numbers 14, verse 34, we find the scenario here is where God sent the spies into the promised land. Please, you must know, they came out of Egypt through the desert. They're going to possess their promised land. And he sent them in to see. And you know what? They came back and they said, no, we can't do it. They, they never accepted what Christ has done. So Hebrews 4 tells them the gospel was preached to them, but they didn't receive it with faith. So they never entered the rest, meaning they never entered their promised land. So what happens is that cycle repeats it again and again and again. Now, he says God has limited a day today. So what he's saying is you are at the choice now. Now, when they said we can't take in the land, God said, your carcasses will be left in the desert. Your carcasses will be left in the wilderness. Now, if we are going to have a repeat of the cycle, this is exactly what happened to Israel. Now, 
it, the, the time period it took to get Egypt out of Israel for a new generation was 40 years because four is the earthy number and 10 is complete and we get it up in numbers. So it says, after the number of the days which you search the land, even 40 days, each day will now be for a year. You shall bear your iniquities even 40 years and you shall know my breach of promise. The breach of promise. Now in Hebrews 4, this breach of promise <laughs> is settled. You will be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of roads to walk in. So a day is not just thousand years. A day is also 40 years. A day is a certain period. We know that seven days it took for creation from beginning to end. The end is rest. So God sent them to Babylon 70 years. In other words, it just means that God is working with the earth for a complete time. They didn't receive it. Now they are on their way back to their 40 years in the wilderness where their carcasses will lie. And it is, it's literally from the cross to 70 AAD. But God intercepted that time and he said, this is the day of your visitation. But at the end of it, he, he sat and cried over Jerusalem and said, you did not recognize your day of visitation. You were willingly ignorant. Because why willingly? They sent people to John and said, who are you? Are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Because Elijah was going to come and warn them like Elijah warned them in the old time. But he said, Elijah will come before the dreadful day of the Lord. Now that dreadful day of the Lord is not the day that Hebrews says God limits a day. So there was a dreadful day. But Jesus' hour brought us into a time where we can step into his day anytime. Not the day of vengeance, the day of wrath, the eternal day.